All right, welcome back to the tutorial series, building a new app from scratch. In this video, we are going to take our little app, which is nothing at the moment, and we're gonna go ahead and deploy it to the internet. Uh, I'm gonna do npm run dev, just to kind of like spin this up on local server here, open it up, and you can see, this is what it looks like. We're gonna push this to my own URL. And we're gonna be using render in this video. Let's take just a hot second and talk about hosting. So if you are a blogger, if you've like hosted WordPress sites before, you basically just know that a WordPress host is somebody who installs the WordPress software onto your server as an application and then you connect a domain name to it and it basically just hosts your files and serves all the files, all the PHP files from WordPress or whatever it is. Well, this is really pretty similar. I would say that there are a few things that could trip up, trip you up um, because we are building apps that are always going to be different. Your app is going to be different than mine. It's going to have different software. Even if you're following this tutorial, you might be installing different dependencies, different packages or whatnot. And some of those will work in different run, time, run times. Some of them won't. You don't know what a runtime is? Good. Me either, sort of. <laughs> it's actually uh, harder, harder to wrap your head around than you might think. But the point is, hosting an app, deploying a web app, a little bit different than just installing WordPress and then hitting go. So you need to choose your host, first of all. And it's going to depend mostly on your specific app, your budget, the features you need, etc. Now, for my purposes in this video, I'm going to be using render.com uh, because I like them. It's you can get started for free on a free plan and their paid plan for just like deploying one app and having it be really fast and really solid and getting monthly active users and stuff like that. Uh, it starts at seven bucks a month, which is super cheap. And for projects that use AI, such as the open a open AI API, <laughs> that's a lot of eyes in there. Um, you're going to have to deal with timeouts. You're going to make a response to the open AI AI and it takes a while to respond, just like ChatGPT. Sometimes it's really fast if it's a simple request, but if you're asking it to generate an entire topical map, a huge table of stuff, it might actually take 30 seconds, 60 seconds longer to respond. And a lot of hosts limit your timeouts. They do. So for example, uh, Vercel, I really like Vercel. I've hosted an app on Vercel, but their timeouts, it kept, it kept giving me errors because it took too long and I couldn't raise them, the timeouts, so to speak. They're all a little bit different, but I use render so I don't have to worry about that. They don't have like a, a limit on their um, timeouts. There you go. Um, at, okay, one more thing and then I'll actually show you. I'll actually do this. Svelte Kit has something called adapters. And basically you can think of this as a little tool that you install that will kind of sort of optimize your code for the specific uh, app or host rather. And this is the wrong docs. What I wanted to show you is this. You can read more about their adapters here, adapter Netlify, adapter Vercel specifically. And I'm gonna be using adapter node for hosting on render, for deploying to render. I need to use the adapter node just in, I th think I need to use it for my current app. Um, it's basically anywhere where you can deploy a node application. Generally speaking, you can use adapter node and deploy SvelteKit. If you don't know a whole lot about this, it's it's tough to wrap your head around. Again, if you're a beginner, you might go to YouTube, you might start here and read a little bit more about what these do. For our purposes though, I'm just gonna deploy on render. I already have a render dashboard. It's where I host a number of things. I actually gotta log in and uh, create an account for free. And I'm gonna go to, well, actually we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Let's install the uh, adapter first. So, uh, yeah, so we'll do this. And I could actually get these from here as well. Node servers, use this, npm install or N npm i. Okay, I'll go back to my app here. Let's uh, exit out of this, clear, command V to paste that. I'm gonna install the node adapter. And we're done. Super fast, super easy. And then I'm gonna to go to my svelte.config file. And you can see, actually, 
you can you don't even need to do this adapter stuff for a lot of places. And depending on what your app is, you might not need to do this at all because it actually comes with an auto adapter inst installed by default. Adapter auto. I'm not going to use adapter auto. I'm actually going to use adapter node just because I'm pretty sure I would need to do that anyways. I could actually try to do it a auto after, but I'm not going to bother because I know I can do it this way. So I'm going to change my uh, import statement here. I'm going to import the other adapter. So instead of adapter auto, I'm actually just going to comment that out for now. Paste this one in, adapter node. And then under adapter, I think I need to do, I think that's it, right? Const config and then kit adapter adapter. Const config. I can delete these comments because I don't need to see that right there. Adapter, adapter. I'll hit save. I should be good to go. Pretty sure that's it. Okay. Yeah, I'm like 80% sure we're good here. <laughs> we'll see. All right, so the next thing I need to do is actually deploy it to render. And this is actually pretty easy. A few things we will need to do. We're going to create a web service. That's what render calls it. It's not just like a static site, meaning there's actually JavaScript and other code that will be changing the site. I don't remember what the word is. I'm looking for a word here. doesn't matter. I'm just going to get new web service. I am going to deploy from a Git repository, which I created in the last video. So I'm going to click Next. My GitHub is already um, connected here. You can see like all of my different repositories. Here's the right one, Topical Map AI. I'm going to hit Connect. Take a second, and now some details. So a unique name for your web service. This is fine. Topical dash map dash AI, that's fine. Region, Ohio, US East, that is very close to me, so that's fine. Branch, main, that is where I want to kind of pull from my main branch in GitHub, that's fine. Directory, optional, that's good. Um, runtime, node. Build command uh, and start command, I do need to enter, and I actually have these down here. Uh, this is also from their documents, by the way. I didn't actually just make this up. Should be down here. Yeah, build command is this, and then start command is this. I'll actually just copy it from here. npm install and npm run build. Copy that. Go back over to the thing, build command. I'm going to paste that in there. npm install and npm run build. And then under start commands, I'm going to do this one. Node build slash index.js. Okay. That's not the right page here. There we go. Paste that in. Uh, all right, now we're good. Uh, I'm going to start free. I will upgrade this as a thing. Oh, the one thing I want to talk about first. I'll upgrade this once I actually start getting users. The big, big, big thing here is that your app will actually uh, power down, if you will, after periods of inactivity. So once it'll, it'll fire back up once somebody goes back to the URL. But that process of like rebooting the server actually takes a minute or two. So if no one lands on your website for your app, I don't, I don't know what the period of inactivity is. It's probably like a couple of hours or something. I don't remember. But after several hours, let's say if nobody using it and somebody logs on or literally just opens up the URL, they're not going to see anything. It's going to be kind of dead, a blank screen, if you will, while things load. That's it. And then after that, it's actually fine. And once the server is spun back up, you can use it as normal. There's no side effects for the most part. You're fine. That disappears. Once you start paying for this, there's zero downtime. Zero downtime. Uh, it just stays. Your server like stays live all the time, so to speak. Uh, again, not so much of a deal until you start getting regular users, and then you don't want to like you know, screw that one person over who <laughs> is the first to come back after nobody's touched the app for a while. So I'm going to start with free. And then last thing I need to do here is actually put in my env environment variables. This is from my dot env file right here. Mm, excuse me. Uh, dot env is not pushed to GitHub. You can see when I commit things to GitHub, commit things in Git, it ignores the .env file because these are private variables, API keys and stuff like that, which I don't want anybody else to know. So what I'm going to do is actually copy everything in here. I'm actually not going to show you this. Um, 
I'll show you one thing. I'm gonna copy it and I'm actually gonna go to add from ENV and just paste it in here. You can add them one by one, line at a time, uh, if you want to, but it's actually easier just to copy and paste the entire thing. So I am going to show you my uh, non-showered face today. My hair is all crazy this morning. I'll tell you what I'm doing though. I'm going to my .env file. I'm copying everything, which is only a couple of lines. Actually, you can't see any. You can't see it all anyways. No, you can't see it all anyways. I can just show you. <laughs> there you go. So I copied everything in that file. I'm gonna go to add from .env here, paste this in there, and then just hit add variables. Add variables. And that is it. Connect, create web service. Uh, this is gonna take several minutes. Um, I'm actually going to pause the video and I'll come back here once it is done doing stuff. Okay, so I waited a couple of minutes and I actually got an error that I uh, have to figure out. I figured I would just do this right here in the video. Shouldn't be that big a deal. Uh, okay, could not find module something build index.js. So that's from our, our run file or uh, our command, excuse me. Make sure I typed everything in here. Pretty sure that's right. Node build slash index.js. Not build. Oh, you know what it is? I know what it is. I didn't actually push. I installed the node adapter, but I didn't actually push it live to GitHub. I'm pretty sure that's it. Git status. No. Okay. So I installed the stuff, but I didn't actually push it to GitHub. All right. Git add git commit installed node adapter and then i will get push okay so we should be good now let's go back over here this might be trying again on autopilot let's see here fail deployed let's go ahead and uh, i'm going to go up here to manual deploy and do deploy latest commit D -d 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 installed node adapter. Okay, let me pause the video again and wait just a minute or two and see if this one works. It's running the build command, hopefully this works. All right, I'll pause the video, I'll come back. Okay, I can see that it just started giving me things here. Uh, I thought I saw an error though, it did give me an error. I don't know what this one is. Something error on error, oh, I think that's just cause, oh. <laughs> It just says error in that file, and so it was actually giving me this, I think. I think we're actually good. Um, uploading build, build successful, it's deploying, running, listening on port XYZ. We are good, it says it's live. Okay, never mind, we're good. So now, uh, I'm gonna actually just copy this URL. It's right there, come over here. And now we're good, yay! Our, our app is live on the internet. Super, super, super easy. Uh, I'll say you can also come down here to settings and uh, connect a custom domain, which I already have. Should I just do that right now? Let's just go ahead and do that. I got my name somewhere. Uh, let's go in Namecheap and log in. I'm gonna need to update the DNS records in some way. Don't actually remember what I need to do, so maybe I can come over here. Your service is always at blah, blah, blah. You can also point custom domains you own to the service. See uh, instructions. All right, so we'll open that up. We'll use this in a minute. Configuring name cheap DNS. All right, add custom domain. And this is gonna be topical map. I already forgot what it was. Topical map AI.com, I think. Let's find it here. Um, do, do, do. I have a lot of topicalmap.ai. Okay, so let's go to manage. I'm sure we'll need to do that. So this will be topicalmap.ai. Hit save. And it doesn't have anything here. So we're going to need to do these things right here. We're going to need an A name or alias record pointing to this. I might have to do an A record. How did I do fab.ai? We should just look at that. We'll come back to this. I'm actually just gonna see how I did a previous one. So somewhere on here, there it is, fab.ai. Go to manage, go to advanced DNS, and I did a, uh, yeah, some C name stuff, and then an A record with the value there. So let's just do that. So I'm gonna come in here, A record, 
I'm going to delete this. Delete. Uh, I don't know what this is. Delete these records and add a new one. Add new record. I think this is just an A record, right? A record at, and then go back to my instructions here. There we go. Uh, a record pointing to this. Okay. Where is that? That, that, and then we need a C name for the www, which is, I'm gonna copy this. C name, www, and then put in this right here. So let's go add new record, C name, www, paste this in here, hit this, and we should be good to go. This should, or could, take up to like an hour or something, a couple of hours, usually doesn't take that long. It looks like that is already good. They're gonna issue me an SSL, I believe, automatically. Let's actually verify that one. <laughs> nope, this one needs a minute. I'll just keep verifying. But uh, the point is we should be good to go. Topicalmap.ai, it should work in just a little while. They're issuing me an SSL, I believe on autopilot, certificate pending. So I'll, this will probably be, yeah, okay. Unable to issue a certificate for this site. Hmm. Well, uh, I'll have to deal with that separately. It looks like I just need to check this stuff out, verify DNS records are correct, support at render, if anything, I'm sure I could like get this taken care of. I'm not gonna do it on this video, but we should be good to go. Our app is now deployed via this other domain for sure. We know that because we've already used it. And then once I get the SSL thing taken care of, it'll be over at topicalmap.ai. All right, that's it for this video. And we'll see you in the next one.